God can't save. Am I going to hell? When the Holy Spirit starts to convict us of our sins, as the Bible has mentioned, we begin to reflect on our sins and doubt if God can forgive our sins. But don't doubt whether God can forgive you or not. Our God is a God who forgives. Our God is a God who loves. Our God is a God of mercy. Our God is a God of tender mercy and loving kindness. Sometimes we view our sins as big because we purposely committed those sins. We feel bad for committing those sins. But we are in doubt if anyone would even forgive us for the sins, let alone God. The fact that we still have these feelings shows that we are sorry for our sins. And we are genuinely remorseful for the sins we have committed. An unrepentant sinner does not care whether they have sinned. Because to them, sin is a natural thing. It is as natural as the air they breathe. Now, will God forgive you for the enormity of your sin? The answer, which is the message from God to you, is yes, God will forgive you. Don't think that God wishes that you die in sin so he can tell you that he warned you. God is not interested in the death of sinners. God does not like the fact that sinners die without repentance. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants you to come to repentance today. The message from God is one of forgiveness and instruction to go and sin no more. God never made hellfire for you. When you feel guilty for all the wrongs you have done, it is a start. It is good. It means you still have your conscience working and the Holy Spirit is using it to convict you of your sins so that you can repent. That guilt is a start, but Satan can use it against you. Satan can hijack it to make you feel useless. Satan can come and tell you that there is no forgiveness for you from God. Even if Satan does that, you should know God will forgive you. The number of times you sin is not the problem. Repentance is the most important element. God will forgive you. Psalm chapter 3 verse 2 verse 3 Many there be which say of my soul, There is no help for him in God. Salah But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me my glory and the lifter of mine head. God will forgive you. The most crucial part is that you genuinely repent. Superficial repentance is not what God wants. Deceitful repentance is not what God wants. God just wants you to open your mouth and confess your sins genuinely. That is all God is asking of you. Just confess your sins. Don't cover up your sins. You cannot cover your sins to God. There is nothing secret before God. If you do evil secretly, people might not see you, but everything is in plain sight before God. Don't deceive yourself. Don't lie that you have not sinned. Confess your sins now. 1 John chapter 1 verse 8 through 9 If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. 
but whoso confesseth and forsake of them shall have mercy. If you confess that secret sin, you will indeed receive mercy. God will be merciful to you. God says he will have mercy on people he will have mercy on. Those he will have mercy on are those who ask for mercy. Don't expect to receive if you don't ask for mercy. Please, confess your sins. God will forgive you because he doesn't look at the size of your sin, nor does he look at how evil it is. God will forgive you because that is what he has said many times. He has promised that he will forgive you. Faithful he is who has promised, and he will never deceive you. One thing that will shock a lot of people in heaven is the type of people you will see in heaven. You will find people that have committed murder in heaven, or people who have committed adultery, or even fornicators and liars, because they ask for forgiveness and receive the free gift of grace, they will be in heaven. Right now, you may think your list of sins is too far and deep to gain forgiveness, but I encourage you to seek the face of the Lord. Only He can forgive. I remember seeing the most wonderful epitaph in a graveyard. All it said on the tombstone was, Forgiven. This is the most amazing epitaph I have ever seen. Just one word, forgiven. What more in life do you need to know that my sins are forgiven? If God will not forgive your sins and wanted you to go to hell fire, he wouldn't have sent Jesus Christ to die for you. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. This is an invitation to you and I. Come now and let us reason together. God couldn't bear to see the works of his hands end in hellfire. God couldn't accept that people end up where Satan was destined to end up. God created hell for Satan and his angels. God decided to free humans from the path of hell. God made an extraordinary arrangement to help us out of hell. He sent Jesus Christ to help us. God loved us to the extent that he gave us his only son. Not to say a prayer to take away our sins or declare that our sins are gone, but to come and die for our sins. Where the blood of bulls and goats were not able to rescue us from our sins, he prepared the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Jesus came through and died for your sins. John chapter 3 verse 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God created a way to escape hell, to go to heaven is a choice, and to go to hell is also a choice. Don't say your sins are too great. Romans chapter 5 verse 8, But God commanded his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God is calling you. God is telling you that he has loved you with an everlasting love. God loves you so much that he calls you his child even though you don't deserve it. God loves you so much that he gave you access to him through Christ. God loves you. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. The question to you now is should you continue to sin because God will always forgive you? Romans chapter 6 verse 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin 
that grace may abound. God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Don't go into sin because you believe God will always forgive you. Once you repent and you are baptized, you die to sin. Your past is erased and you have a new life. All the sins have gone with the old life. Just as a newborn, you have a new life now in Christ. Old things have passed away, so you shouldn't sin intentionally. Don't say that you will repent later. Brethren, there might be no later. You might die in that sin. Sin is easy to enter, but it is always hard to escape. Sin is not a place you enter and run out of immediately. Sin has chains and it will hold you down. Chains of pressures will hold you down. Chains of lust will hold you down. Don't go into sin purposely. The Bible says to flee from every appearance of evil. Don't stay around sin. Don't eat with sin. Run from it now and you will be delivered.